The Douglas Bell Canada Brain Bank is one of the largest brain banks in the world. Located at the Douglas Mental Health University Institute of McGill University, it currently holds more than 3,000 human brains. We have been very interested in trying to understand how is that events that occur in life affect the way the brain functions. Examining the brains of people who suffered from depression as well as those who committed suicide is relatively new. So how is that traumatic experiences get into the brain and change the way we perceive reality or we behave and we feel? And how is that puts um, uh, people at risk of suicide? So my lab has been um, a major player in shedding light in these mechanisms. Thousands of brain samples from the Douglas Bell Canada Brain Bank are used each year by researchers all over the world. So I have to make some dissection from people who suffer from schizophrenia and also from people who had no disease that we think had no disease. So we provide tissue samples, brain samples, to researchers in Canada and throughout the world who are interested in understanding uh, Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, Huntington's disease, or psychiatric disorders like a bipolar disorder or major depression, for instance. So did you figure out whether this, the, pro, the primers that you have will work for the... So my lab has also been very interested in understanding mechanisms of response to antidepressants. So some patients take an antidepressant and they are equally depressed. Some respond and some don't. So why is it some respond and some don't? And we have um, made important discoveries in um, relationship to this question by studying small molecules that are known as microRNAs. So in my lab, we're interested in looking at the uh, microscopy of brain regions involved in the regulation of mood and emotion uh, in the brains from people who suffered from depression and who died by suicide. So we'll prepare our tissue to be sectioned in our cryostat. We'll take our specimen holder with our tissue and put it into our cryostat right here. It helps us make very thin, extremely thin sections of our tissue, one one hundredth of a millimeter thick, like so, that we can then visualize under the microscope. So the brain bank um, not only contains the brain, you know, the brain tissue, but contains all the information on the individuals that donated the brain, yes? Because the, using the brain tissue without the histories of these people, it's useless, yes? We cannot use the brain tissue without knowing about the lives of these people, their pathology, what the medications they use, drugs that they may have abused, their um, life histories and trajectories. So all this is very, very important. So we're very grateful to everyone who signs their consent form you know, to, to give their brain for research because otherwise we couldn't carry out the research we're doing right now here and elsewhere you know, throughout the world. We're able to do today much more you know, in the lab uh, than only five or ten years ago. So in terms of uh, being able to prevent or even cure brain illnesses in the future, I'm very optimistic. And as we uh, obtain that information as we continue and go along will be better positioned to understand how the brain works and when is that it doesn't work very well. I'm very optimistic. <laughs>